Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome to Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail. A game which is now properly in early access, and the campaigns are as well. As far as I know, the campaigns are not quite finished yet, as in there um, aren't all of the missions available just yet, but I figured there was enough of them here for me to have a go at it. So, despite my better judgement, we shall be playing the filthy tea-swilling savages first, because despite all of their many, 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 many failings, the British were pretty damn good at making wooden warships at this period in history, so I figured it only correct that we start out with them, especially as we are currently apparently at war with Spain. I don't know what the Spaniards did to deserve this, but I am sure it was something thoroughly horrifying, and therefore murdering every last one of them is probably justified in some way, shape and or form. Though we shall be killing all of them, or well, we shall be killing all of the, you know, actual Spaniards, but we will be keeping their ships. Which is why I would really appreciate it if um, Her Majesty's Richmond would be a little bit more careful in how she treats my trophy ship. Speaking of, um, Galga, what are you doing? Shit, okay, well, I was kind of thinking she would actually, you know, go for the coast and seek shelter under the guns of the Spanish fortress over here, which we are supposed to be capturing, but no, instead she has decided to snuggle up right close to Her Majesty's Richmond, for reasons that I am not necessarily completely and utterly aware of, but reasons that I shall nevertheless take advantage of. Now... Oh, I figured that actually would be a pretty damn uh, good chance to board her, but uh, apparently the game logic disagrees with me there. Alright, let's try and get a little bit closer. I figured that was a fairly good angle, but nope. Oh, Ceres, what on God's good earth are you doing? No, 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 come over here. Don't waffle around down there, you moron. Can we board her butt? I actually don't think we can, sadly. I'm pretty sure I actually literally do have to be alongside her. Which, to be fair, does make a certain degree of sense. No, no, don't, don't try to run away. Don't run, you'll only get murdered, tired. Ah, yes, this is uh, a well-known and favoured strategy by the Spanish in ship-to-ship uh, -ship combat. They present their butts and therefore prevent the British from boarding. However, it is not enough. The lines have been cast and very, very soon the Gallagher will be filled to effluence with British seamen. After which she will be so enamoured with the taste of red bellies that, red coat, excuse me, that she will never again wish to leave what is going to be a very large collection of ships at some point. And this is not much of a fight, the Gallagher's crew was already um, flagging and the Richmond is just a much larger boat with a hell of a lot more dudes on it. Both of which are of course quite vital advantages in boarding actions. Um... No, not just yet. Okay, so I am actually not going to capture the Galga immediately. Uh, instead, I am going to disengage from her, keeping all of my lovely little British seamen intact, and I'm going to go for the Mercedes, which is of course the second prize on offer on today's banquet. And we shall stuff her full of seamen as well, therefore including her in our bootious cargo. And instead, I am going to have Her Majesty Ceres, I don't know if it's her or his majesty at this point in history, by the way, but I'm going to assume her for no other reason than because we can make some really funny names out of that. Oh, yes, we can. Anywho, back to the actual battle here. We are going to bring Ceres right up alongside her. Then we are going to put a nice little rowboat in the water, like so, and they shall board Ceres. Or Garka, excuse me. Therefore ensuring its loyalty to the Queen. Now, I do need to run down Mercedes and well before as well before she gets any ideas of safety or, you know, not being stuffed full of British seamen. 
These are not things that will be accepted in my waters, thank you very much. I don't think they've introduced a uh, actual ramming mechanic yet, so I think we shall engage in a little bit of uh, faggotiness here and simply just park Ceres right in front of her, therefore preventing her from going anywhere fast. And then... Oh, kind of you to turn in. Very kind of you, in fact. Hold on, let me just... Drop the sails there a little bit. I'm prepared to welcome you. No, no, damn it. I think I'm a little bit too fast. Oh, you filthy scoundrel. Uh-oh. Right, let's be a little bit careful with uh, Galga here so that we don't wander her straight into her erstwhile sister. It'd be somewhat unfortunate to lose her right after capturing her, wouldn't it? At least we are stripping the crew of this poor vessel at quite the quite the velocity, which is neat. Then again, so the way in which grape shot works, supposedly, is that if the enemy ship has a lot of its armor remaining, then the damage is going to be far less uh, because the crew is still able to, you know, effectively shelter from the grape shot. And I do think that is probably the case to some degree, but. I've actually done a couple of tests with this, where I've basically de-armoured a ship almost entirely, and even pretty much devoid of armour, I feel like Grape Shot just doesn't do that much damage, which is a bit unfortunate. Okay, this this is a really dumb position. Oh, God damn it. Richmond is going to have a hard time actually turning properly here, isn't she? Yes, yes she is. Come now, come now. Get your engines moving, you little morons. Unfurl the sails and all that nonsense. Alright, we're gonna have to hunt her down the old fashioned way, I'm afraid, and she's being a little bit combative. Ah, <sighs> dirty, dirty, dirty little whore. Come back here, stop making stop making yourself so damn precious. You will be mine whether you like it or not. The sooner you surrender and realize that, the less I'm going to have to hurt you. It's really that quite simple. Oof. She has found herself a really annoying spot, though, where I can't quite get to her. Like, at all. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to try and circle her, I guess? I could also just outshoot her. The Her Majesty's Richmond will m win any kind of a shooting match in which the two are engaged. Um, I kind of want to do some shore bombardment, but I'm also a bit sh afraid of the shore, honestly. They've changed the way that ships move a fair bit. They've uh, nerfed their maneuverability by quite a lot, which I think was absolutely necessary. But it has also meant... Um, it also now means that the shoreline is really actually quite dangerous because if your ships get stuck on it um, in a particular position then they will have no way to escape and for some retarded ass reason a ship that is beached will sink now i would think that it would literally be impossible for a beached ship to sink but clearly and the fine folks over at Games Labs uh, disagrees with that particular notion. So you really do want to be a bit more careful than usual when you're in shallow waters right now. Right, that should be a halfway decent angle. I just need to turn here. Um, deliver her one more broadside of point blank range grape shot. At least once the ship has turned a little bit more. A little bit more. Little bit more. There. Open fire! Wow, that was dreadful. Half of those cannons still missed after I spent a bunch of time thinking, well, let's just get right alongside her. Oh. Well, that was quick. Okay, well. I, I shan't argue too much about that. Let's just pump some semen into her, as mentioned, and cut her loose. 
This is a well-known British naval tactic known as the pump and dump. Look it up. It's probably in naval manuals somewhere of some sort. <laughs> oh, I might be lying, but you never know. All right. With this, I figure it's also about time to deploy our uh, land well, la land born seamen. Yes, indeed. We have some of those as well. Not all of our seamen are actually nautical in nature. Some of them are, in fact, amphibious, capable of traveling on land as well as the sea. I could also um, get the crew aboard the vessels to get off and help fight be here, but... I doubt that'll be overly necessary. I do actually have halfway uh, professionals on these vessels, these being actual transport ships instead of just ships of war. So I think I've got a mix of fusiliers and some um, sailors, I think, as well. Not marines, but just sailors. Should be more than enough to overrun the militia forces of the Spaniards. Oh, yes. Look, look at this. Look at this. This I've, I think this is a marine unit, isn't it? Well, that didn't tell me much more than I already knew, but uh, they're level two. Ah, yes, there you go. The icon there. Yes, they are indeed a marine unit. So they, if the propaganda is to be believed, actually know what they're doing. I'm not in range of the guns here, am I? No, good. Alrighty then, let's have these three taking care of the little town, and we'll have Bailey, once the game decides to cooperate, no? No, apparently not. I cannot draw a path there because there are boats in the way, I guess, I don't know. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Right, well, that's interesting. Huh. Apparently, Poison has decided to withdraw due to... Oh, fuck if I know. I'm sure he had wonderful reasons. In fact, no, I, I'm not sure he has wonderful reasons. I'm pretty sure that is just a little bit of a bug. It is still early access after all. Hopefully, yep, there we go. He's rediscovered his balls, which is very useful because I could still use him for, you know, some actual fighting at some point if he doesn't mind an awful much. All right, we'll have poison over there since I don't feel like I can trust the yellow-bellied little bastards. Um, he can guard my rear and we shall have the rest advance instead. I do want to deal with those four-pounders because they're kind of picking away at me without any real recourse right now, but... Let's line up a little bit first. So, yep, there we go. So that we don't rush in unsupported in case there are more Spaniards hiding in the bushes. In fact, there were a lot more Spaniards hiding in the bushes. Huh. Who'd have thunk it? All right, well, Buckley and Hadlig will go around them. Poison will take care of those skirmishes there. might actually be able to nab, if not all of them, then a significant portion of them here. Don't follow them out into the river, they're just skirmishes. Oh, you're gonna charge, are you? Okay, that's fine with me. That is entirely fine by me, in fact, actually. If you don't mind, I would actually quite like to knock out that gun battery too. Thank you very much. And shattered, yes. That was a rather poor decision to charge me there, seeing as you were kind of retardedly outnumbered, but oh well. The Spaniards never were famed for their tactical acumen, now were they? Actually, were they? <laughs> I don't actually know. I'm going to assume no. They, they do have a pretty bad track record against the British, if nothing else. Pretty bad track record against the Americans, too. Uh, the Spanish. Now, to be fair, to be fair, they did do pretty well against the, uh, the Aztecs and the Mayans. And 
the Aztecs, okay, they had some unfair advantages there, and especially considering the Aztecs thought they were gods and such nonsense, but they beat the, Maya, the Mayans pretty much fair and square, and, well, fair and square is an overstatement. They, they did employ some rather shady, underhanded tactics there as well, but there were an awful lot of Mayans, and unless the Aztecs, unlike the Aztecs, excuse me, they weren't quite as hide-bound by their religion and put up quite the fight. Ah, the tales of the conquistadors. I highly recommend everybody to read up on the adventures of Cortez in particular. He was a ruthless little motherfucker, he was. But a damn effective man as well. There we go. That's another unit shattered, which is just about in time. I would like to get out of the field of fire of those cannons if I could. Meanwhile, we are just pushing these poor bastards closer and closer to shore. I could potentially almost just ignore them, but they're skirmishers. They could be really, really annoying if I let them go, so... We shall try to finish them off instead, especially now that we've got them in such a fantastic position. I knew what was good for them, they'd, s they'd press bloody surrender, that'd be wonderful. Oh, that's one of them down. Oh, hi there, you're gonna try and run away, are you? Yeah, good luck with that. Come now, surrender. Give me your guns, I could use them. No? Oh, yeah. Oh, hello there. Whilst I was busy paying attention to that nonsense, I was not busy paying attention to this nonsense. Flanked? What? I'm pretty sure that wasn't a flank, but never mind. I They did get them out of formation, though. They did catch them out of formation, so I guess that's fine. Oh, you're still trying to get across there, right? What the hell are you shooting at? Oh, no, it's the... I started to wonder if I was shooting my own dude, but no, I was pretty, I'm pretty sure those were the fortress guns just blazing away as usual. Six pounders. Uh, not the most dangerous of weapons, but considering that I am currently dealing with uh, formations of 60 odd dudes, a six, pow six pounder is actually a pretty dangerous weapon. It's not like in Ultimate General Civil War when I had entire batteries of those things firing at infantry formations, numbering in the thousands. You gotta reevaluate things a little bit here. We shall leave poison behind. McDonald can march up here as well. Right. If memory serves, there were some bad guys over in the woods there. We'll go deal with them first. And yep, there they are. Regulars of the second company. Hello. Second company. <laughs> well. <laughs> fuck off, I guess. <laughs> oh, they ran up so bravely, like, ah, we'll get them. One salvo later. Maybe we won't. Ah, uh, I do think, I don't know. I've heard people argue that the musket lethality in the game is a bit high, but I don't actually know if that's the case. Again, bearing in mind that these are very small formations fighting at deceptively close range. Um, in Ultimate General Civil War, you are actually fighting at a fair bit of range, whilst here, this is what? Like, like what was the range? Can I see the range? I can't see the range at the moment. Ah, oh, there we go. So this, this is what... I'd probably say that's maybe 10 meters, maybe 15, and that, that's pretty close range, even by musket standards, that's not bad. So I think maybe they should be round about this lethal, honestly. Right, let's deal with the second company regulars. They are actual, actual soldiers, so that actually were there. They need a little bit of dealing with. Um, Begum, I'm gonna have you just block those, because... Buckley's men are far more valuable. And we're just going to advance upon the regulars, push them into a corner, and eventually murder them most viciously and thoroughly. Ah, 
And musketry is not that dangerous, either. like, if you've got cover, musketry will still not cause that much in the way of ridiculous casualties. But of course, like this, this is like, what, five meters? If, if even? Yeah, at that kind of range, musketry is going to be pretty dang dangerous. They might not be particularly accurate weapons, but that doesn't matter if you could throw them at the enemy, and you'd have pretty much the same effect. At spear chucking range, a musket is still fairly lethal. I could pull poison up there as well, but I don't know. Now nah, we'll leave him down there. Oh, Buckley, come on, give me a good salvo. That's good enough. That's good enough. Actually, charge them, please. I can catch them, can't I? I... Well, fuck me most gently. Okay, well, never mind. I figured I would just be able to run over there and catch them as they try to run past me, but... No such thing, apparently. That was annoying. Okay, well, we'll block them in with McDonald, and we can move Poison up there as well to... Because now they're moving back towards the village, and I'd rather they didn't move towards the village. Okay. We'll move in and secure the battery garrison, and also the large battery of six-pounders. Now, that is 160 men, which may seem like a bit of a daunting prospect, considering I've barely got 160 men in all of these units combined, but they are artillery crewmen, and as such, their morale is, uh, far from steady. I'm thinking a couple of volleys straight into their flanks. Oh, they're, st they're still standing. Hmm. I figured a couple of volleys like that might actually flat out break them, but not yet, not yet. One more, then charge. Into them, my friends. There you go. Don't fire. Thank you. And some prisoners. I shan't refuse, I shan't refuse. Tragically, we have not been able to secure much in the way of prisoners in this mission, which I think is probably going to affect how much loot I'll get. I was kind of hoping to secure a nice, solid amount of muskets here to use for the future, but such is not my destiny, it would appear. Oh well, I'm sure we can pilfer some guns from the casualties. If there's anything like uh, Gettysburg Civil War, I'm thinking most of them will have broken their rifles out of sheer bloody spite regardless. But hopefully not all of them. Another unit shattered. Oh, hello. They're gonna go for the capture target, aren't they? Filthy little fucks. Yes, yes, they are. Dirty little whores. Right, please don't make me chase you across the entire bloody island. You're gonna make me chase you across the entire fucking island, aren't you? Well, it shouldn't matter, matter once I recapture the village and wait a little bit. It should be all over anyways even if I don't chase down these last 30 little bastards. Yes. Well, we're gonna have to wait a little bit longer to capture the village, but that should be it. Well, aren't you just thoroughly annoying then? Come now. Sit in the water, nice and obvious. Oh, I miss cavalry already. Right. 
We'll finish it up there. I... Can I be bothered? Can I be bothered to kill every last single little Spaniard on this entire island? You know, out of sheer goddamn spite, I think yes. Yes, I can. Oh. Out of just sheer ungodly, unforgiving spite, yes, I think I can. Come now. You can run, but you can't hide. Well, you can actually hide. That would be the most annoying thing. There we go. Now that all of the Spaniards are dead, we may finish the scenario. What kind of goodies did we get today then? 81 Sea Service muskets, 31 78 muskets with bayonets, 46 again with bayonets, and 36 Spanish M1717s and two Bratz cannons. Mm, not the richest of hauls by any estimate, but we did get the Galga and the Mercedes, so... All in all, I'd certainly consider that a fairly successful mission. The ships, of course, were the primary objective there all along, because they will be valuable additions to my fleet. Especially since now, our dear little Admiral Nelson is going to be promoted. And with promoted, I mean he's going to lose his nice big fat HMS Richmond, and instead be put in charge of two tiny little shit buckets. Because that's a promotion. It was, it absolutely was. It allowed him to climb the ranks, and it gave him command over two ships instead of one. And of course, every captain, unfortunately, must start at the bare bone bottoms. I have been promoted to captain and given command of a brig and an old sloop. I dreamed of staying on a HMS Richmond, but to do so, I would have to have had to remain a lieutenant. Promotion is a better choice, right? Absolutely. I mean, yes. Falling down from a frigate to a sloop is a rather massive drop on the food chain of wooden warships, but oh well. We are anchored in the mouth of the San Juan River, and there we wait. We have had no news from home, no news from Jamaica, no news at all. There is a saying, during war, no news is good news, but soon we will need to replenish the food and rum. For the men, the rumours of half rations may become reality in a matter of weeks. And this, then, is our new campaign map with the missions. It is, as far as I can discern, a linear-style series of missions along the lines of previous Ultimate Admiral games. Which is fine. I do hope they deviate from that formula for uh, Dreadnoughts, but, you know, for this, it's fine. Anywho, these are the areas in which I can buy various toys and goodies, but we shall save that for the next video, where we'll have a look at it and also spend some experience points on this lovely hat right here. Until next time, I've been Arch, thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon with more Ultimate Admirals Age of Sails. Have a good day.